those five keys are good for professional drivers and they're good for anybody that sits behind the wheel and starts a car and engages it. Breaker Breaker, this is the Truck and Tanker Yanker. I'm 10-8 with my tin in the wind, my heaters are glowing, my manners are showing. Wind her up, let her go, come on. I'm your travel agent with a story to tell. Let's go for a ride. Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood truck and tanker Yeager. Here I am. Uh, I want to talk to you today about safety. In 1995, I took the Smith driving system, uh, which is a very good driving system that has five keys of driving safety. And if you learn those five keys, learn what they mean and how to apply them, then you will be a safer driver. The five keys of driving safety according to the Smith Driving System is best remembered by the acronym All Good Kids Like Milk. All aim high in your steering. Good, get the big picture. Kids, keep your eyes moving. Like, leave yourself an out. Milk, make sure that they see you. Those are the five keys of driving safety. All of my kids, when they got their driver's license, had to be able to understand those five keys and repeat them back to me. Those five keys are good for professional drivers and they're good for anybody that sits behind the wheel and starts a car and engages it. I'm just saying. Aim high in your steering. That's an important one. And you have to look more than 50 feet down the road. Most people, and I'm telling you, this is 85% of people only look about 50 feet in front of their vehicle. They just sort of get a fixed stare at that point. And until something hits that vision within 50 feet, they don't react. And then obviously all they can do is react. And reacting is not the best thing to do in most situations. Thinking is the thing to do before the situation happens. Aim high in your steering. That means looking down the road at least minimum 12 seconds ahead of you. And if you wonder how far that is, well, a good following distance for the vehicle in front of you, at least as far as big trucks are concerned, especially as far as big trucks concerned, is four seconds. That's a safe following distance. You wait for the vehicle in front of you to cross something that you can measure yourself against. And once it crosses a mile marker or something like that, you go 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. If you're closer than four, if you go 1,003 and, oh, I went over the same point, you're too close because that's the distance it's going to take you to stop. Now, uh, four-wheelers, if you jump into a space that is less than four-second following distance in front of a big truck and you're in front of him, you're in danger of your life because if something happened and this happens constantly if a deer a dog a kid a ball a car runs out in front of the in front of the four-wheeler the four-wheeler suddenly forgets about everything that's behind him and stomps on the brakes and the big truck piles right into him and I guarantee you a whole lot more damage will happen to the occupants of that car than will happen to the occupants of the big truck aim behind your steering is looking down the road minimum of 12 seconds now that's I say it's a minimum now I don't know what the Smith driving system says now because it's been so long since I took it but my opinion is look down the road as far as you can see and if the road goes around a curve look around the curve it's just like one of the other keys always keep your my eyes moving keep your eyes moving is looking all the way down the road and back the shoulder, the sides of the road, because there could be deer, dogs, kids, whatever it is, if you're in a city or out in the country, and the median on the way back. Looking at the traffic on the other side of the highway. I know of a situation where in the same place, it's like, talk about bad luck, and I don't even hardly believe in luck, but this was bad luck. In the same place, two big trucks got hit head on by other big trucks from the other side of the interstate because they had a steer tire blow. That's another safety tip I can talk about some other time. How, what to do when your steer tires blow. Steer tire blow 
it drug him across the median, through the median, up on the other side, and hit an egg England in the truck head on in a slow lane. Didn't matter if the England truck was doing the speed limit, which they generally, most of the places i ever seen an England truck, they do, or under the speed limit, uh, hit him head on. The only person that survived that wreck was the 12 year old daughter of the England truck. Uh, his daughter was in the sleeper and she's the only one that survived that wreck. And there was another wreck where somebody was killed in the same exact spot for the, almost the same exact reason. Now, if you're in the England truck and you're paying attention to what's on the other side of the interstate, then you're gonna actually see, boom, that guy just had a blowout. Oh, he is coming straight at me. I can anchor the brakes, I can steer left, I can steer right. I can go someplace other than into that guy's grill. All right, so uh, uh, aim high in your steering means looking down the road. Okay, the next one, keep your eyes moving. It's looking down the road, looking back, looking in your mirrors on both sides, knowing what's beside you, knowing what's behind you. It's always keeping your eyes moving. Your job is to drive a truck. It's not to pick a new tape for your tape player or CD or whatever it is that you use, iPod plug-in thingy, or spend all your time going through your X and M radio trying to figure out what you're gonna listen to next. Your, your job is to be a driver. If you're driving a car, it's the same thing. You know how many people I see doing other stuff when they're driving, when they should be just driving? That's just it. I mean, it's like putting on their makeup, uh, uh, eating their, their hamburger. You know, I don't ever, I rarely do I eat holding still. But if I gotta eat a hamburger from a hamburger joint, uh, I hold still because it's gonna be all over the place otherwise, you know, and it's like, you know, it'll be in my beard, it'll be on my shirt, it'll be everywhere. You know, and I see people go down the road with their nachos propped up and their knees are going like this. It's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, when you're driving, that's what you ought to be doing is driving. Just, we don't need to be reading going 75 miles an hour, okay? <laughs> We're already texting, eating cereal. Can't be doing three things at one time. All right, and uh, that's keeping your eyes moving. So all, aim behind your steering, uh, uh, I think I skipped a point there. I missed good. Uh, good, which is get the big picture. <laughs> All right. Uh, keep your eyes moving was number three. All good kids, good is uh, get the big picture. That is the same as keeping your eyes moving, really. I mean, there it's a redundancy, aiming high in your steering, getting the big picture, uh, uh, keeping your eyes moving. They're, it's somewhat redundant, but in order to get the idea through to people, I think you have to be redundant. Uh, get the big picture. Know what's going on behind you, beside you, in front of you. Making a space cushion around you. Now, you might be in New Jersey, California, pick any big city in the country, and you're going to be like, space cushion? Yeah, right. Uh, but you can try to do the best you can. And when you're in a big truck, and you got some guy, you know, like my part of the country, eh, really, there's a lot of room much of the time. Uh, but I don't let people hang on my right hand door. If I move over, change lanes because somebody just merged onto the interstate and then they just hang right next to me, I don't let them hang right next to me if I don't have to. I got room in front of me, I got room behind me. Uh, if I can speed up, which I got a governor on my truck like a lot of you do, uh, I can speed up and get ahead of the guy or I can slow down and get behind the guy. Invariably, you know how it goes, drivers. Uh, four wheelers, uh, it's like they squirt ahead, they slow down. And then once you're behind them, they slow down. And it's it's some ingrained thing, I think, into the human race that you got to be ahead. And then once you're ahead, then it's no big deal anymore. But if somebody else looks like they're going to get ahead, then you got to stay ahead, you got to speed up. And four wheelers, uh, if you're driving a car, think about your driving. Think about what's going on. Many of the big trucks around you have governors on their trucks and they can't go over. Uh, well, there, there's some, I know one company that's uh, nearby us, 62 miles an hour is their top speed. My company is 65 miles per hour. Uh, uh, some companies will set them at 68 miles per hour. My son works, uh, hauls mail. And the, the mail company he works for has their set at 68 miles per hour. Some of those trucks got 70 miles per hour on them. Uh, some trucks, because of the country that they're going through and they have their set for 75. And then, of course, there's some cowboys out there that don't have no governor at all on their truck, and it looks like it. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you what, those old boys would really make some time if they ever stayed on the highway instead of passing me four times a day. Anyway, I'm just saying. So get the big picture. Uh, 
uh, keep your eyes moving. You're driving. Pay attention to your driving, not what's going on inside your car. Yeah, okay, windshield wipers, cruise control, uh, headlights. There are certain things that are part of the safety features of driving that it's important to, to take part in. You know, what happened to the good old days when, when people dimmed their lights uh, because they were actually driving and they were thinking about their driving? It's like at night. What are you doing in your car where you forget to dim your lights at people? You know how many people are always running with the high beams on? I don't know what it is. Now, I know if you're in a big city like Los Angeles, people didn't even know that they had uh, uh, high beams on their headlights because you don't even need headlights in Los Angeles in most places because there's so much uh, ambient light from just around you. Uh, but anyway, so uh, aim high in your steering. Get the big picture. Keep your eyes moving. Um, all good kids like leave yourself an out. Now, when I was talking about the guy sitting there beside you, uh, you have no place to go if that guy stays there beside you. Slow down so that way you can get back in the slow lane. Don't hang with a group of traffic. Always happens in, in bad weather. You've got snow, ice, everybody clumps up into one big knot. And it's like, well, there's one large accident waiting to happen right there. Now, and I also know that when you're in a more populated area that the, the, the clump is just solid going the whole way. Uh, I've, I've been in Seattle when they got eight inches of snow overnight and it was the traffic was so stopped people actually just parked their cars in the middle of the interstate and walked home in the morning when i was going through there at about four o'clock in the morning it looked like moguls out in the interstate with these parked cars you had to wind your way through all the parked cars on the interstate yeah so i know in a big city it's really hard to to leave yourself an out when the traffic is packed that tightly i know one situation where a guy that used to work for me was in salt lake he was driving in heavy traffic on I-80, and uh, uh, there. And apparently, what had happened was a road rage thing. So there was a camper in front of my driver, and uh, and I tell you the truth, I don't know if he had a safe following distance or not. But there was a camper in front of him, and and in front of him, that camper was a station wagon, older station wagon, and in front of that station wagon was a guy in a Jeep who apparently was quite angry with the guy in the station wagon for some reason or another. And the guy in the Jeep anchored his brakes in front of the station wagon and the station wagon hit the guy in the Jeep and the station wagon stalled and came to a dead stop right there in front of that camper. The guy in the Jeep took off and the camper seeing that there was uh, a guy stopped directly in front of him that he could not stop for moved out of the way just like that next thing you know my driver sees a parked car in his lane and he has no place to go and he pushed the back end of that station wagon all the way up into the back seat of that station wagon now fortunately nobody was seriously injured in that accident but uh you know and he really didn't have a lot of options because of how heavy the traffic was it was at a rush hour and that type of thing but trying to leave yourself an out, trying to find a place where you can go. I'll give you a case in point. One time I was uh, uh, driving in a situation a lot like my driver Wayne, uh, where the line of traffic in front of me, and I tell you the truth, I can't remember the situation apart from I'd already been paying attention to what was going on behind me, and I saw the guy behind me uh, was tailgating me, and I might have been in a pickup. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I was in my pickup. Anyway, I knew that I could stop for the traffic in front of me, but the guy behind me could not stop for me. I knew that as a fact. Because I had the big picture, and it kept my eyes moving. I was aware of the guy behind me, it was beside me. When the traffic came to a skid and stop right in front of me, what I did was I come to a skid and stop over in the emergency lane. I just moved over like that. And sure enough, that guy behind me skidded right up to alongside me and hit the guy in front of me. <laughs> now, I'm sure the guy in front of me was real happy about that. But the thing was, is it could have been a worse accident if the guy had hit me. Getting the big picture, keeping your eyes moving, leave yourself an out. And I had the emergency lane, and I'd already had that planned ahead of time. Well, not planned ahead of time, but I knew that that was an out for me because I'd been paying attention to the guy tailgating me behind me and I had a safe following distance and that's why I was able to stop in time but I knew that guy couldn't. Okay, aim high in your steering, uh, uh, get the big picture, uh, keep your eyes moving, 
leave yourself an out. And the last one is make sure that they see you. Make sure that they see you. Now, when you're driving in town and you see somebody from a side street going to make a turn or wants to pull out in front of you or pull out somewhere, you know, they want into traffic, make eye contact with them. If you don't make eye contact with them, you can assume they don't see you, okay? Now, back in the old days, that used to be a polite thing to get people to notice you. Like, if you're going to pass, you would go like that when you're passing somebody or blink your lights a little bit when you're going to pass somebody. Not high beams. You know how many times I get people high beam me to let me know they're coming around? It's like, oh, thank you so much. I was saw you there, and now I am blind at night. Thank you. No, I don't appreciate that at all. Don't blink your high beam. You turn your high beam, you turn your headlights off, on, off, on, like that. Now, with daytime running lights, it's a lot harder to see people going off, on, off, on, or whatever like that. I understand that. High beams are not an option at night, all right? Don't signal anybody with high beams. All you do is wreck their night vision. But make sure that they see you. Get eye contact. It's like I have... Oh, I don't know, air. Uh, currently, right now, I'm in a broke-down truck waiting for somebody to come fix it. <laughs> so, uh, I don't have air right now. Uh, I'd blow my air horn. But that's what I do a lot. I blow my air horn. And uh, just, you know, not like I'm mad. But just like that. And you see their eyes swing over to you. I got their attention. That's all I wanted to do. Make sure they see you. Okay? You know, there's other points to the Smith driving system. Uh, look, looking for snipers. A sniper is somebody that's like a kid running across the lawn chasing a ball. Now, I'll tell you what, my oldest son would be dead now if I had not taught him to obey his dad the first time. Not the second time. I didn't count to three. I taught him how to obey. Yes, we use discipline and we use it uh, frequently and all the time. And that's the reason why he is alive is because I disciplined my son. He's today currently 29 years old. No, no that one... That's a different son. Uh, uh, he is 32 years old, I think. 32 or 33 years old, something like that. And uh, uh, right now, and he's alive and making grandkids for me uh, because I taught him how to obey. Now, this is he was a sniper. He was chasing a ball. We had a driveway. We lived in the country, but there was a busy two-lane road at the bottom of the hill where our house was. He was chasing the ball down the driveway and his mother yelled at him and said, Ben, stop. He stopped right at the edge of the highway. <laughs> a car went flying right by. If he had not obeyed the voice of his mother, the first time she said, Ben, stop, he would have been killed. Because the, those cars did 55 to 60. It was a country road, but it was a straightaway. And we got drag racers on the straightaway and that kind of thing. And uh, uh, he would have been killed looking for the snipers, looking for the the, uh, the safety concerns that are going to happen. Deer feeding on the side of the road. You know, I've used deer whistles. Uh, half of them run out in front of you and half of them will look at you. I've used my horn. Half of them will look at you and half of them will run out in front of the road in front of you. I've uh, not done anything and half of them will look at you and half of them run out in the road. I've tried everything. The, the best thing that works is for me is I'll just go like this just like that my zip tie broke just like that and that's it's as good as way as any to get the deer to make up their mind if they're gonna run out in front of you hopefully they'll run out in front of you sooner than later uh, I just hit a deer doing 45 miles an hour on a dirt road last week and because I did that exact same thing, what I just did, but it was a young little Bambi type deer. And at the last minute he turned, he was standing on his shoulder. At the last, there was a whole group of them on both sides of the road. Last minute he turned, ran right in front of me. It's like, boom. Uh, that's why I got a bumper in the front of my truck. And uh, didn't do any damage to me, but I think it wrecked his day. Just saying. Remember, aim high in your steering, get the big picture, keep your eyes moving, Leave yourself an out and make sure that they see you. If you can keep those five keys together, you've got a running shot at staying safer than the average bear. I'll guarantee you that. Now, 
that having been said, I'll tell you a short story about a guy that was the safest driver I ever knew. His name was Steve. When I was running flatbed for a building material dealer, uh, back in the mid 80s, he wore his seat belt. He did dead nuts to speed limit or under. He was the safest guy I knew. And this was his mantra. And he, at that time, he was in his late 30s, probably close to 40 years old. He said, if you do the right thing, you'll always stay out of trouble. If you do the right thing, you'll always stay out of trouble. He was on a two-lane road doing 50, 50 miles an hour in a 55-mile-an-hour zone. A guy pulled out in front of him and stopped. He had a 1972 white Freightliner that Steve was driving, cab over, and he hit that guy broadside at 50 miles an hour. Steve was okay, but that guy was dead before he hit the pavement. He was driving some early 70s tuna boat forward, and when Steve hit him on the driver's side, it pushed that guy out through the passenger window, and he was laying on the street out beyond the car. And they say that he was dead before he hit the road. Steve wasn't injured at all because he was wearing his seatbelt. I seen that truck after the accident. You've seen him old bullnose Kenworths and that type of thing. His truck looked like the opposite. Just about mid radiator on down, it was like it was made, it was pushed back about a foot and a half. The steer axle was pushed back into the fuel tanks, but it was it was almost like it was perfectly done, like it was made that way. It was really odd. Come to find out, that guy had just come from the doctor's office and found out he had terminal cancer, and he decided to commit suicide by truck. He ended his life, but he messed up Steve's too. Steve wasn't hurt. But he had always said, if you do the right thing, you'll always stay out of trouble. And he got involved in an accident where somebody died. He took two weeks off from work. And he came back, he did one trip, and quit. I don't know if Steve ever drove a truck after that. But I tell you what. The most unsafe thing that you can do is get out of bed every morning. Because once you start your day, all you're doing is mitigating safety with expediency. We try to be expedient, but we have to try to do it as safely as possible. And that's what the five keys of driving safety from the Smith Driving System is all about. It's trying to do and be expedient in the safest way possible while you're driving. Keeping your head on your driving rather than on what's going on in your truck or with relationships and all that kind of garbage. And even, I can tell you a story about my head was not in the right spot. Emotionally, I had problems uh, in my family and it affected what was going on around me. You can't let that happen. Keep your eyes on the road, always moving, getting the big picture, looking as far down the road as you can and back, making sure that they see you, leaving yourself an out. It's, that's what your job is as a driver, whether you're driving from here to the grocery store in your car, or whether you're driving from Miami to Seattle in a big truck, or LA to Maine in your big truck. It doesn't matter whether you're in an urban center or whether you're out in the country. Get the big picture. Drive safely. All right, that's my safety tip because I actually believe in that. And I'm probably a little more serious than, than average because it is an important thing about driving safely. And it looks like my time is even a little longer than I normally have gone. And that's because it's, I think it's important. So just stick to it. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more family-friendly true stories because I'm just going to tell you true stories as best as I can remember them. And my kids say sometimes they they change a little over time and I do the best I can. I just try to tell the truth. But, you know, hey, who can say? So make sure you ring the bell and give me your thumbs up. Uh, 
It's just like blinking your lights and tooting your horn. It's just polite. That's right. Um, remember, take it easy and keep the shiny side up and the dirty side down. Make sure you look further than your hood ornament. 12 seconds or further down the road as far as you can see, right? And don't be a bumper sticker. Do you get that joke yet? Don't stick on a bumper. Don't be a bumper sticker because you might find they have to peel you off someday. Mm -mm. No. And it makes you look unprofessional because that's what professionals do. Four second following distance. See you on the flip side. We gone.